Equity and inclusion are vital for the City of Greensboro's ability to grow and innovate in such a fast-changing environment. One Greensboro is a monthly show that highlights some of the ways the Office of Equity and Inclusion honors the observances listed on our heritage calendar and spotlights a City of Greensboro employee in a segment we call The One. These observances are an integral part of the National Equal Employment Opportunity and Civil Rights Program and encourage us to live as one people, one community, one Greensboro. Welcome to this edition of One Greensboro. This month's edition, we are focusing on youth and young adults as it pertains to our equity and inclusion calendar. We are so very happy to talk to Jacia and Iman. Two employees for Parks and Recreation, one that's on the front lines as the director, and the other that is a youth working in our community. And as always, we are so very happy to talk with this month's The One, who is John Rife at the Greensboro Aquatic Center. So as always, sit back, relax, and enjoy One Greensboro. Considering that this month is focused on youth and young adults, we are so excited this month to hear what they have going on and exactly how that can tie into some of the things that we will be celebrating throughout the month of April. So I'm so proud to start our interview out with Jacia. How are you doing? I'm doing well, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. So tell us a little bit about um, your position okay. and how long you've been with the city of Greensboro. Okay, well, uh, my name is JCS Stevenson and I am the director of the Greensboro Youth Council. Um, I have been with the city actually over 15 years. Um, Has if it you, been that long? Yes, if you count my time oh, wow. in GYC, it's, yes. it's, it's more a than longer. That, okay. a little longer. We're not going to go there. We're not okay. going to talk about that part. Um, but I've actually started with uh, the Parks and Recreation Department in the city working at a rec center. Okay. Um, that's where I got my start. Um, came to GYC, uh, started off as assistant director, and I've been director for a little over 10 years now. Doing a fine job. I remember my days in GYC. I had so much fun, so much fun. So with all that being said, tell us about, some people may not know what okay. GYC means mm -hmm. and also the history of the organization. Okay, well GYC stands for the Greensboro Youth Council. Um, it was founded in 1962. Um, many, many years ago, and it was founded um, to have a positive outlet for teens in the community and allow them to have a connection to their community. Okay. Um, over the years, um, it's kind of changed as far as the focus. We started off with a very political base, working a lot, working alongside city council and initiatives that they had, but until recently, it's actually been more of a leadership, volunteer service base, um, and also focusing on the professional and personal development of our volunteers. Um, so I think a lot of that change also comes from what the teens want in mm -hmm. the program mm -hmm. uh, because we are one of the first youth-led um, councils uh, in the United States, actually. Oh, so I that, didn't realize yes. it was the United States. Yes. I thought you were going to say North Carolina. Oh, no, not North Carolina, the United the States. The whole United States. Yes, with okay. it being youth-led. Wow. Um, and that's something that we try to make sure that we continue to focus awesome. on. So any decisions that, that I make, I always try to make sure that I discuss it with them first. So it's Absolutely. not just coming from me. So even though I'm the director, our chair, our board, those are the ones that I try to make sure I get their voice and they're getting get their opinions as well. Wow, that is so awesome. And that prepares them for what they're about to get into yes. as far as going off to college, work life, military, mm -hmm. whatever Absolutely. they choose to do. That's so, so inspiring. Mm -hmm. So what are the requirements for GYC as far as membership is concerned? Um, well, membership for the Greensboro Youth Council starts in August and runs to January every year. Okay. Um, and the requirements are just to uh, attend an orientation or an interest meeting just to kind of see what it's about mm -hmm. because we realize that every team might not fit into the mold of GYC or might not have what they want so come see what it's about see what it's like um, so that's our first step the next one is to fill out the application if everything's a go and you think that it'll be a great fit you fill that out um, within that we also ask their interest and things like they what they want to be a part of as well mm -hmm. and then they pay a one-time $20 fee that takes them the entire time that they're in high school so it's not a yearly fee it's just one time when they join so if they join as a freshman and they stay until senior year they only have to pay that fee once wow. okay and then after that they can just start uh, volunteering with us mm -hmm. and then to maintain membership um, this year we actually had to main we actually had to make a few adjustments with COVID Absolutely. Um, just to make sure that we weren't asking too much of them mm -hmm. so this year we discussed it with the board and we changed it and they um, so this year it's only 10 hours per semester, oh. so 10 for the fall, 10 okay. for the spring, okay. um, attending at least one of our projects. Mm -hmm. We try to offer uh, two to four major ones every year. Right. Uh, three of our monthly uh, workshops or trainings that we offer, mm -hmm. and then those focus on everything from uh, like emotional intelligence to 
um, public speaking and skill building, resume building, things of that nature. Wow. And then we also have monthly meetings where we bring the entire council together to give them updates on what's going on and activities as well. So for those parents who weren't aware that this was out there or thought that it was an invited type of group, mm -hmm. as long as the child is a rising freshman, it's not yes, like in high school. as long as they're in high school. And we are wow. working, fingers crossed, if COVID will allow things to open up some more, we're also working to incorporate eighth grade oh, um, into, into what we're trying to do. So Very that is something important. that we're excited about. We've had a couple come in for some mm -hmm. programs mm -hmm. and they've done really well. So we mm -hmm. want to see if we can um, expand that with in the fall and then also looking into the spring. How That's can great. we can expand our program? That is great. So what are some of the key programs? I know some of the ones that I remember and love and we won't even talk about that haunted house I used to run at Caroline Circle yes. Mall. That's I how used old to, school. I, right. I used to so go. So you were probably remember, going to the house I was when like, I was yes. like, right. Yes. So Mm. But what are they doing now? What are some of the programs now? Um, so currently what we have actually for the spring, um, we are working on an aromatherapy workshop. Um, we've talked about a lot of things to, to de-stress and mm. self-care. So we're working on that as something that we hope to have in April as well as possibly throughout the summer. Okay. We also have our service learning camp. Yes. Um, we have, it's two sessions this year, one in late July, uh, one in late June and one in July as well, focusing on poverty in our community. Um, so with that program, they take the first few days and actually learn about what that looks like in their specific community because a lot of times they see it on a very global Absolutely. national level Absolutely. but we want them to see it on the local level mm -hmm. um, so really excited to, to have that program again this year and hopefully being able to do it in person if not virtually mm -hmm. um, but they get to do that um, and then we're also working with uh, Britt Huggins, who's our youth development director with youth services on some other teen programs, such as a foot golf, a foot golf clinic this summer, um, going to the lake and having um, kind of like a glow night at the lake. So we're trying to do as the sun goes down, glow sticks, s'mores, okay. all of that good stuff. So really trying to do some outdoor programming for okay. them this summer because they've been inside with school and everything's been virtual. Yes. So we really are trying to do some outdoor programming for them right now. Okay, I have to ask, foot golf, what is foot golf? So foot golf, instead of your traditional golf with, you know, the golf clubs yes. and everything, this was also, this is actually a new trend within Parks and Rec. Hmm. Um, we actually kick it. You get your own ball and like you kick, kick it into ball. it. Yes, but not as intense. Ooh. Yes, because you kind of compete against yourself and some teams. So okay. it's, actually really, it's actually really exciting. I think we've hmm. had some clinics for adults as well. Okay, you're going to have to call me. Yes, okay. we have to see. But I can't break anything. So oh, no, no, no. It's, okay. it's very, it should be very low okay. impact. Unless okay. you're really competitive. Now that I, I am. Okay, well then that might be a okay. little. So it'll, we'll, it'll be I'll good watch. Though. I'll watch yes. that. Okay, yeah, okay. But those are programs that we have going on um, coming up in the next few months. But our Wonderful. traditional ones are, like you said, our Halloween Festival Absolutely. Goulash and our Santa's Workshop program that we have, um, that'll be in December of this year. Which you all do an awesome job running. Yes, so please those, keep are, those, those are two of my favorites. Yes, yes, yes. So one of the last things I wanted to, and you touched on it a few moments ago, but how is GYC promoting equity and inclusion throughout the city of Greensboro? What are some of the things that you can highlight mm -hmm. um, as far as that's concerned? Um, I think for us, one of, I know my biggest things for myself personally as the director, and a lot of people say they don't see mm -hmm. that that's going on. Um, but I like to make sure that I am aware and not making it so evident, but just knowing that we have to be aware that that's going on, the teams that are coming to us. One of the things that our volunteer manager, Miracle Collier, brought to the organization um, is a sense of belonging training. Yes, so having them understand what that looks like when you come to a group, because everybody's coming from a different background, a different Absolutely. aspect, so how do we include that in what we're doing? And it's very simple, just making sure that you're making, that you're making someone feel welcome when they come into a room, mm -hmm. that you address them. Um, I think also with our, uh, we had teen vent sessions that we had this year as a way to give them a place to just be able to talk and have a voice right. with all the challenges that were going on with COVID and their frustrations. It was just really open forum. We had some topics, but they got to talk about a lot of things, yeah. um, whether it be you know race and things that they were dealing with, frustrations with school. It just really gave them that opportunity to do that. And I think with GYC, that's what we try to do is give them that place to have that voice, to be who they are, to be themselves. Um, and showcase that to the community because it's really about them and what they're Absolutely. doing. So Absolutely. I think that's the, the best way that we can do that is having that safe space for them to come and be able to do that. Well, I love the program. I'm a product of the program. So please keep up what you're doing. Um, I hope you all can not be virtual so you can get back face to face, yes. but you're doing a fine job virtually. So thank, thank you. you so much for coming out today and telling us a little bit about GYC. Thank you for having me. Thank you.
Welcome to this edition of The One. The One is an intimate conversation with City of Greensboro employees that are working to create a culture of oneness in our organization and our city. This conversation will allow you to get to know them and hear their thoughts on our journey to create One Greensboro. Our employee this month is John Reif. He is the operations coordinator at the Greensboro Aquatic Center, and he's also the co-lead of the Young Professionals Employee Resource Group here at the city. Hi, John. Hey, Maria. Thank you. It's great to be with Welcome. you today. Welcome. I feel like we're a year later. Well, we are because we spoke last April. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. At the Aquatic Center. So. Not sure if it feels like it or not. It, sometimes it feels longer. Sometimes it feels fast. Year. It's been a long year, but you've been doing some great stuff, which hopefully we'll get to in the interview. Yes, so tell everyone a little bit about yourself and what your role is for this city. All right, so I serve as the operations coordinator at the Greensboro Aquatic Center and so under that role I manage in-house programs such as swim lessons, water exercise classes, memberships, and then I also serve as the risk management and safety manager and so I just make sure that the facility is safe and accessible for everyone. And then one of my other cool roles for the city is I get to serve as the city of Greensboro's co-lead for the Young Professionals Employee Resource Group. Yes, and so I get to serve a um, amazing group of young professionals and we get to network and just kind of find cool ways to impact the city while focusing on building a diverse and inclusive future for the city of Greensboro. Wonderful, and you and Devin do such a great job. And I know you all are doing um, a project for us now where we're doing Take Our Daughters and Sons to Work and you all are co-sponsoring that. So thank you for everything you're doing. And you know Madison loves a swim lesson. So we're about <laughs> awesome. to get her back over there. We good are. Stuff, good stuff. We are. So what would you say, you named a lot of different things, but what is the coolest and the most interesting project that you're working on right now? So I would probably say it relates to the programs and swim lesson side of my operations role. We're currently working on bringing back the 2021 I Can Swim Camp. And so that is a special, um, it's a camp for water skills activity base for people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And so it's a week long and unfortunately last year due to COVID, we were not able to offer it. Um, so a lot of big impact that was missed out on. So we're very excited. Um, Ashley Collier and I Can Shine do a great job with that. So if anyone's interested, you can find more information on Facebook, but definitely a great program to get involved with, whether it's on the participant side or you wanna volunteer with Wonderful. it. Wonderful, I love it, I love it. What would you say, um, if you could think of a person who inspires you, who would you say that person is? Who inspires you the most and why? So when I think of who inspires me, maybe not necessarily one exact person, but I think of leaders with inspirational traits. Um, so kind of empathy, um, leading with compassion. I know facing adversity and then coming to work and still being present and leading others and making them the best you can is very challenging. Um, so when I think of a couple people within the city of Greensboro that are that way, I like to think of David Parrish, um, my co-lead, Devin Smith, and then also yourself, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> Just to put John, you on the spot. Yes, ma'am. John, you put me yes, on the spot. Yes, oh, ma'am. That's so sweet. I do. I do. That's so Y'all sweet. Y'all are definitely inspirational. Well, well, you know, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, you are an inspiration to me because just how you all care so much at the Aquatic Center, um, you know, for the children, especially that program you are just talking about, that has so much community impact. So please keep doing everything you're doing. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, you're making me blush. Oh, my gracious. Um, who would you like to swap places with for one day? So as part of my master's program, I got to learn from a gentleman named David Olson, who is the PNC general manager, mm -hmm. which is a large scale sports event facility in Raleigh. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think just the opportunity to be able to step into his shoes and bring everybody together for a night of an amazing event or sporting event would be awesome. Absolutely. Yes, and isn't that where the hockey games are? Yes, so they do the Carolina okay. Hurricanes, yes, they do yes. all the NC State events, okay. um, and then they bring in some other events and stuff as well. Okay, so I'll have to call you that day so you can get me in for a hockey yes, game. Yes, ma'am, of switch. course. Okay, all right, because I haven't seen hockey in a long time. <laughs> I missed neither. it. So how is celebrating young professionals and youth a step towards One Greensboro, what we're trying to do? So I think it's a step towards One Greensboro for many reasons. I think it creates a platform for young professionals and young community members to feel like the city of Greensboro is a safe and inclusive place for them to get involved. Um, I think it gives us that foundation to come together and address those kind of tough issues. Um, you can be kind of wholesome within your unique self and be vulnerable. 
because it is a group that allows you to kind of be more honest with your unconscious biases, things like that. Um, so I, I think it's just, it's necessary, it's needed, um, and definitely a great opportunity to get involved in. Wonderful, and the one great thing that I love that you all have started doing recently is reaching out to other young professional groups in the city like Synergy. Could you tell a little bit about that too? Yes, yeah, so recently we've tried, started trying to bridge out and kind of network with some of these other prominent young professional groups and find ways that we can work together. Mm -hmm. So if they have a cool event going on that we can participate in, we want to be there to impact the city in that way. If we're hosting a cool event and we can bridge the gap and have them participate, that's important to us as well. Um, and they've done some cool initiatives and so there's things for us to learn from and then hopefully we can teach them some stuff along the way as well. Absolutely. And the JCs, there's so many different groups that yes. I know you all are going to partner with. And now that things are lifting a little bit and it's getting a little warmer, hopefully y'all can network and do some more things, some cool things. In yeah, the we're really excited. Just kind of a short and sweet one. We're doing a little Adopt a Stream project that's where the right. City of Greensboro young professionals are hoping to adopt a stream and so that'll hopefully give everyone that first chance to get some fresh air come together and absolutely. clean up our city absolutely well I've outgrown it a little but make sure you tell me the date so yes, I can come yes, I love that I love cool. that last question is how can we create um, a culture of oneness you talked about kind of with young professionals but in your opinion what can we do for the whole city of Greensboro to get that one Greensboro in your opinion so I think continuing a lot of the initiatives that are currently in place. Mm -hmm. um, I think the Office of Equity and Inclusion does a very good job with the employee resource groups as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, I know I've witnessed it's still growing to where new ones are being added, and so I, I think that is great. I think one thing the city can continue to do, um, I participated in an online module training the other night, and it was a really cool metaphor related to investing in resources. And it was, if you got a new job and they were all using flip phones or something like that, you may not be as motivated to try to reach the new goal or make big changes. But if you're involved in a city that's investing in resources, time, money, to really focus on diversity and inclusion, it's going to be a lot easier to reach those goals. Wow. So I think if the city can continue to invest those resources, create cool events to participate in, things like that, definitely be a step in the right direction. Wow, well I'm just so glad we are here and we invested in bringing you to the city and you are one of these co-leads and you're doing that marvelous work that you're doing over at the GAC. So thank you. thank you so much, John, keep it up and I'm sure I will find something else that we need for you to do. So you know I'm gonna call you. Yes, ma'am, thank you, Maria. I Wonderful. appreciate you inviting me today. Thank you, thank, thank you, John. You. Yes, ma'am. And now we're continuing our conversation with our second employee from Parks and Recreation. And I'm so excited because I get a chance to talk to one of our youth. One of our youth that is definitely making changes in Greensboro and doing a lot in our community. Hello, how are you, Iman? Good to see you. Good to see you too. I'm doing good. Good. I'm so glad you could come today so we can talk about what GYC is. And I'm just interested to get to know you because I've seen so many great things that you've done. And I just want to talk to you and find out what you have as far as your plans. So tell me a little bit about um, yourself. Introduce yourself and then tell me what school you go to and some of the things that you're um, working on right now. So my name is Iman Khan. Um, I'm a senior at Northern Guilford High School um, and the chair of the Greensboro Youth Council. So right now we are working on our photo voice event which is like a our spring event that we're doing in place of one we did last year because of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, so normally we have something called Theo's Threads and Camille's Closet, which yes. is a prom event, but yes. we're not doing that because most schools aren't having proms and mm -hmm. things like that. So we're having this photo voice event. Instead, where teens have an opportunity, opportunity to talk about their cultures and how different people perceive their cultures and how they perceive them. Um, so it's just another outlet to kind of get to do something else during COVID. Wow, that sounds like fun. And so you're helping with the project, but you have a huge role as chair as well. So tell everyone about what it's like to be GYC chair. So GYC chair is a really fun position. Um, it's a great leadership position. Um, I serve as a GYC spokesperson, so you know, doing different things for GYC and interviews and things like this. Um, as chair, I also kind of am in charge of making sure everything's running smoothly, coming up with new projects if we need them, and just making sure that my team is on the same page and we are all happy to work together. Wonderful. And how many years have you been chair? Is this your first or second year? This is my first year being chair. First year yes. being chair. Cheers. So were you vice chair coming in or? Last year I was actually the training director. The training yes. director. I love that role. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I planned and facilitated trainings um, throughout the school year for all that the teams in Guilford County. Okay. Yes. So how was it 
operating in COVID. How was that being chair? It was definitely different and unexpected because um, I did talk to the chair from last year and she was like, oh, it's so exciting. And then everything kind of changed because of COVID. So everything had to be moved online and everything had to be like in a different format. But with the help of my advisors and my team, it was definitely a fun experience, um, even during COVID. And it was still something that I would recommend anyone to do. Wonderful, which leads me to my next question. Why is GYC so important and why should the youth of Greensboro get involved in GYC? I think GYC is so important because it allows the youth of Greensboro to meet with people from all over Greensboro. Mm. So I, you know, generally I go to Northern, so I would meet with kids from Northern, but now I have friends at Grimsley and Page and, you know, even Southwest. So it allows you to really n figure out what Greensboro is other than just what you're used to. Absolutely. Now, do you have friends in my old high school? Smith. My dad went to Smith. Oh! Yes. I probably know your dad. That's the sad thing about it. What's your dad's name? His first name's Max Sood. I think I have heard uh, we of do. Dad. He has an insurance agency. Okay, I do. Yes. I have seen your dad stuff around town. See, yes, yes. Smith High School, the best, and Northern, of course, yes. of course. Yes. All right, always have to represent our high schools. Um, what are some of the coolest programs that you hope come back? Because I know some things were kind of put on hold, but what are some of the cool programs that you hope to hopefully do in the fall? Um, one thing that I really hope we are able to do normally is our goulash event. Mm. So that's normally in downtown and we have big bouncy houses and like games and everything like that. This year we had to do it in a drive through format because of COVID regulations, but that's one thing I'm really excited for because it's a really fun event that everyone enjoys. Absolutely. I know I, we're, some of it is actually here in LaBauer Park. Yes. It bleeds over because you all have face painting yes. and everything. So I hope it comes back as well, too. Um, you talked a little bit about uh, the Photo Voice Project. So is there anything that you need to let people know to participate in that project, to get the word out that you'd like more participation? Because um, I'm assuming it's started or it's about to start yes so yes so we would love for more people to join okay. um, basically our whole thing is that everyone's gonna submit two pictures okay um, one picture is like how you view your culture and how others view your culture um, and it can be something as simple as like food like I think my food is delicious but sometimes not everyone else likes spicy food so things like that um, or it can even be clothing because a lot of different cultures have different clothing. So it's definitely something that we would love for everyone to participate in. Mm. Um, and then the pictures are going to be display in, displayed in the cultural center okay. um, in April. So everyone can come in and see them. Now see if it was live food, you can always call me to be the food taster. So yes. just remember that. Okay. Remember that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, to that note, and this project is a perfect example of it, but how else do you feel GYC um, promotes equity and inclusion in Greensboro? Um, I think one of the biggest ways is you just get to meet people from all over. So like you get to meet people from all over the world whose parents came to Greensboro. Um, you get to meet people who may have been in Greensboro, you know, their family has been in Greensboro for as long as they can remember. But you get to interact with all different kinds of people who give different perspectives on like what's going on. Yes and you just like you really do change your view of the world sometimes. Wow. Now all of this that you've been working on with GYC, now I have to know what are your future plans? What do you want to do? So I plan to go to college in the fall. I'm not sure where yet. I'm still waiting for some decisions, but I want to do physical therapy. Yeah. Yes. And so I want to get my doctorate in physical therapy and then actually work in the NICU. Oh, so, look at you. Yes. That is wonderful. That is wonderful. And would you attribute GYC to some of the leadership skills that you have now that are going to hopefully get you into those top colleges to do all of this in your PhD? Yes, definitely. Wonderful. Um, I've definitely learned some really, really valuable leadership skills through GYC and just learning how to work with a team and not, you know, just by yourself. Wonderful. Well, thank you so very much for coming and speaking with us today. And I'm hoping we can get more people to participate in that project because it sounds like it's interesting and it sounds like it's going to bring you all even closer together. Yes, so, definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you.